Hello, my name is Letitia Williams and I'm head of the personal injury team here at Hodge Jones and Allen. On the 12th of May, myself and Rifat Yaku presented at the sixth annual Headway Suffolk Neuro Conference. We answered some frequently asked questions about the types of immediate help a client and their family may need if dealing with a brain injury. We also explored who can provide that help, the importance of case managers, and why we think it is vital to instruct a solicitor in the early stages. I hope you enjoy watching our presentation. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us by visiting hja.net or calling 0808 296 6253. Hello, firstly, thank you for having us and we are delighted to be supporting the Headway Suffolk Neuro Conference today. I'm Letitia Williams and I'm partner and head of the personal injury team here at Hodge Jones and Allen. Just to give you a bit of background, I deal with mainly serious and catastrophic injury claims, including brain injury. I'd now like to introduce you to one of our partners, Rifat Yakub. Rifat, would you like to introduce yourself? Thanks, Letitia. I'm Rifat Yakub, and I'm a partner in the personal injury department here at Hod Jones & Allen. I specialise in catastrophic and life-changing injury claims, including brain and spinal cord injuries. Um, so I have a very good understanding about what immediate help a client and their family will need um, when they are faced with a brain injury. Thanks, Rifat. So during these next 15 minutes or so, we thought we'd give you a whistle-stop tour in answering some frequently asked questions about the types of immediate help a client and their family may need if dealing with a brain injury. We will also explore who can provide that help and why we think it's vital to instruct a solicitor in the early stages. So the first question that is often asked by clients or their family who've suffered a brain injury is, why do I need a solicitor to help? surely we can get all the help and support we need from the NHS. Now, usually at the start of the process, families are under enormous pressure and are not sure which way to turn. So Rifat, what are the answers to these initial questions? The NHS are fantastic at providing medical help, particularly in what's called the acute phase, i.e. the first weeks after a trauma. But you have to remember that their primary role is to get you well enough either to be discharged or moved to a small specialist ward or specialist hospital. With long waiting times and often stretched resources, it's difficult to get the treatment that you need quickly enough. By instructing a solicitor early, they can liaise with the defendant insurer and get you the early rehabilitation required to start rebuilding your life. Financial compensation is not the first and only thing seriously injured clients need or want. They want to get better quicker, and to do this, they need the best and the earliest rehabilitation intervention. For example, studies have shown that the earlier that you have rehabilitation, particularly where you suffer a brain injury, the better your outcome. Right, so the earlier the intervention, the better chances of getting help quickly. So when a client comes to us, what would we do first to help them? Well, the first step is to meet both the client and their family and assess the extent of their injuries and get a better understanding of what their needs are. With someone who has suffered a brain injury, it's important to assess whether they have capacity. We often meet brain injured clients either in hospital or when they have recently been discharged. It's usually a family member who contacts us in the first instance. They're often overwhelmed by the situation and they really don't know where to turn. Once we meet the client, if we feel they do not have capacity at that stage, we can discuss with the family the appointment of what's called a deputy to manage the injured person's finances going forward. This can be either a family member, but in more severe brain injury cases, um, it's a professional deputy, someone in our court protection team, for example, that can assist and has specialist experience to deal with these type of cases. They're trained to act in the client's best interests and they will work closely with the family to ensure that the client receives the right care. We can also speak to the consultant if we meet the client in the hospital um, or the rehab team if the family would like us to. If I see a client in hospital, for example, I will often want to know whether or not the rehab team have instituted a rehabilitation prescription. And if there isn't a rehabilitation prescription, I would want to know why and make sure that that's in place uh, for when the client is discharged from hospital. So once we've dealt with those capacity issues and got that resolved, what happens next? Well, the next thing to do is to write to the defendant as swiftly as possible and put them on notice that a claim um, is going to be pursued 
Um, we would want to outline the injury sustained. Our priority is always to ensure that the client receives rehabilitation at the earliest opportunity to maximize their chances of achieving the best outcome for them so that they can so far as possible return to their pre-accident life. We will ask the defendant to agree to engage the rehabilitation code and arrange what's known as an immediate needs assessment. A case manager is appointed often on a joint instruction basis to carry out the assessment. The immediate needs assessment report will detail all of the injuries that the person has suffered. It will outline the immediate needs, including the rehabilitation, the treatment needs, the care, the assistance, the aids and the equipment, the accommodation, the education, for example, where the injured individual is a child, or the employment issues and money issues which that injured individual um, is likely to experience. They also consider what the family will need, such as help with childcare, help with travel to appointments, etc. The case manager will then organise the recommended help and treatment required. The role and relationship between the case manager and the client is crucial as it can often last for many years and they organize everything to take the pressure off the client. Every individual is different, as are their needs. So we have to ensure that the treatment and the recommendations are appropriately tailored. The rehabilitation code states it as its objective is to help the injured claimant make the best and quickest possible medical, social, vocational and psychological recovery. This is what we strive to achieve through the claims process. Great. So, so it seems as though a case manager is integral to the process of assessing a client's needs and getting them the right help quickly. I guess, therefore, the obvious question is, if you don't instruct a solicitor, will you have access to a case manager? A client or their family may also ask, can we do this ourselves without solicitor help? And would they have to organise and coordinate all of this themselves? Letitia, that's a very good question. It is possible to have access to a case manager. But without bringing a claim, an individual will not know what case manager to appoint, what experience they have, what specialisms they have. And of course, appointing a case manager can be extremely costly. A case manager wears many hats. Um, and when you've suffered a brain injury, which is often a life changing injury, you need someone to release the pressure in managing contact with the treating teams, listening to what the professionals are telling you, coordinating and listening um, to therapists to formulate a rehabilitation plan for you. Um, a case manager can often take the worry away from you and help you to plan for your discharge from hospital. So you don't need to worry, for example, when and how this will occur, what your house may end up looking like. The case manager will organise the care, the support, the equipment that you need to ensure that the transition from hospital to community and thereafter is as smooth as possible so that the injured individual can be left to concentrate on getting better. So Letitia, maybe you could explain further the types of issues that a case manager and the solicitor can assist the client with in the early stages. Yes, now the areas in which we can help in the early stages are firstly, as you've said above, early rehabilitation. Once the NHS acute care is finished and the client's been discharged from hospital, we can, can then arrange and coordinate private therapies, treatment or referrals quickly so the progress is not delayed. The funding can be released from the insurer directly through the rehab code or by getting an interim payment. Now obviously the type of rehabilitation will of course depend upon the severity of the brain injury. It can involve inpatient rehabilitation in specialist brain injury units with a multidisciplinary team or community-based therapy if the individual can be managed at home. The treatment and recommendations will be tailored to what the client needs. We can also advise which benefits the client is entitled to, and we will often liaise with the client's employer to discuss sick pay and the short-term plan for employment. Another area that we can often help with is accommodation. If the client's accommodation is no longer suitable for their needs, such as they can no longer walk upstairs or move a wheelchair around the property, suitable housing can be found with the aid of an early interim payment or funded directly by the insurer. Also, if the client requires any equipment, such as walking aids or modifications to the bathroom or kitchen, we can also arrange this. Now, psychological help is another big area and we can often arrange the treatment through healthcare partners. There is also psychological support for family members who've been affected, such as partners or children. We can also put in place 
people to help in the homes, such as cleaners, carers, or childcare services, whatever the family may need. So the role of the solicitor and case manager working together is vital in helping a client with their immediate and ongoing needs. Rifat, you've got a client at the moment who is benefiting from this type of help. Can you tell us about them? Yes, of course. Um, well, this particular client um, I met in, while he was still in hospital, he'd suffered a brain injury and also a spinal cord injury. He was very severely injured. Having met him, I learned very early on that uh, the property that he was living in, the flat that he shared with his partner, wasn't suitable for him to return to following his discharge. The property was far too small. It was not single level and the access was restricted. So what we did was we notified the defendants very early on uh, with regards to the claim. We arranged for an immediate needs assessment. And as part of that process, we appointed a property search agent to look at properties in and around the area to see whether or not there were any appropriate and suitable properties for him to move into short term on a rental basis. It was really important that we made sure that we found a property very close to where he lived to ensure that the children's schooling, he had two children under the age of 10, was not disrupted. His wife had also given birth to a new baby, only a couple of months old. So what we did was we managed to get um, a property to rent in a local area, and the defendants agreed to pay for the rent. We arranged for care package for the client for when he was discharged from hospital. And we also provided some support for his partner so that she was able to have some assistance in looking after the young baby and the children. Now, the children were traveling to school and it was my client who was taking them um, before he went to work. He could no longer do that. So what we did with, we asked for a local taxi company to, uh, to help and uh, to take the children to and from school. We also ensured that the client was applying for all the benefits that uh, he would now be entitled to. Because it was such a life-changing injury, the client was particularly affected. He, was, he had mood swings, anger bursts, he was frustrated. The family didn't know how to cope with this life-changing event. And psychological support was extremely important. And we made sure that that was provided to the family early on. The children were also struggling at school. So we made sure that they had support at school. The teachers understood the issues and the problems that the family were facing in this very early stage of um, my client's recovery. At the time of the accident, the client was also employed. So I arranged to speak to his manager and asked whether it was possible to keep his job open for him for a period of at least six to 12 months while he engaged in the rehabilitation process. And while we tried to see whether or not it was possible for him to return to that employment or an alternative employment that might have been available with his employer. So those were just some of the immediate steps that we took, having been appointed early on to assist our client. Thanks, Rifat. It's great the client's been able to access the immediate help and treatment. However, that's clearly not the end of the story, as you touched upon the fact that your client has ongoing and quite serious needs. So can you explain what is the ongoing role of the case manager throughout the life of the case and why you, the solicitor, remain vital to the process with your client? I think it's the key is, um, in all cases, is to make sure that you have a good brain injury lawyer and a very good and experienced case manager. And together they will work tirelessly throughout the claim to ensure that each and every need is met. We no longer wait to the end of a claim to present our client with a large compensation check. What we do throughout the claims process is to ensure that the client's needs are met as and when we go along. It's imperative that the earlier that the lawyer gets involved, the better the likely outcome for the injured person and their family. In parallel with putting uh, the rehabilitation together and ensuring that the, the client has the right care package, we make sure that we get the multidisciplinary team of experts on board who are leaders in their fields to maximise the client's damages. Our primary focus is to maintain good lines of communication with the client, the family, the insurer, our experts, and whoever may be needed in this multidisciplinary approach to settling the claim. We adopt a very collaborative approach and our client is at the heart of that process. We never lose sight of the client and his needs. The client's needs and wishes are paramount throughout our involvement. 
With the right team in place and with sensible, open dialogue, we hope to return the clients as far as it is possible to their pre-accident lives. Well, I hope our presentation has answered a few of the questions that you often get asked. If anyone has any other questions or requires any further information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our details are on the screen, as you can see. Um, all that's left to say is thank you for having us and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.